Wow, hello guys, welcome to my channel. You're welcome to Master Builders Online Academy. I want to sincerely appreciate every one of you who have subscribers of this channel. Thank you very much for subscribing to our channel. Thank you for making necessary comments on our video content. Thank you very much for sharing our content and then liking our videos. So guys, I want to quickly put this clear to you that this is a continuation class in engineering thermodynamics and as we have it we are diving into the first law of engineering thermodynamics okay so now in looking at the first law of engineering thermodynamics there are basic things that we really need to know because this will actually empower us to solve as many problems as we can if we know some basic rules and then basic principles here so you understand that this channel we focus more on principles than the solving because we understand very clearly that when you understand principles, you automatically become a principal. And when you understand boundary conditions, you will not overstep your boundary. So, as you can see on the screen now, we have first law of engineering thermodynamics, which is the same thing as first law of thermo dynamics remember engineering thermodynamics is actually governed by four laws right it's actually governed by four laws the first law is the zeroth law the second law is the first law of thermodynamics the third is the second law of thermodynamics and then lastly we have the third law of thermodynamics i hope you understand that zeroth law first law second law and then third law of engineering thermodynamics but in this aspect of this module we'll be focusing more on the first law of thermodynamics so guys but eventually you are asked what is the first law of engineering thermodynamics or state the first law of thermodynamics what will you see and that's exactly what you're seeing on the screen now right now okay so the first law of thermodynamics states that energy can neither be destroyed nor created energy can neither be created nor destroyed it means that you cannot form new energy and then you cannot actually destroy an existing energy but it can be translated from one phase to another are you there you can actually change it from one outlook to another you can change it from one pattern to another but you cannot utterly destroy it and you cannot utterly create fresh one but you can actually translate existing ones to new ones are you there so even though you think you have destroyed a particular uh energy you don't you didn't actually destroy it you you only succeeded transforming it from its original state to another state so it's no longer useful or serviceable in that first state where it was but it's now serviceable in another state so to you you may feel you destroyed it but it is not destroyed because it is useful in its current state all right so after being able to get this now the basic thing that we really need in this first law of thermodynamics under this calculation remember we are actually focusing on calculation we are bringing this in now so that you will know how to solve these problems using or applying the first law of thermodynamics okay so in this case in any thermodynamic system there are three things that actually exist number one is heat number two is work done and then number three is what we call the change in internal energy first law of thermodynamics is given as q minus w is equal to change in u so this guy we can term this as our equation one so more of the problems that we are going to be solving under this category now we will be using this equation one are you there we had q represents heat w represents work done or work why you or change in you represent change in internal energy that's data you change in internal energy now as we progress that you can see from here that this change in internal energy is actually between two points remember from our physics knowledge that work cannot be done unless a distance is moved that means there must be two points there must be an initial point and then the final point so if this is clear so this internal energy is obtained between two points it's just like displacement which is distance covered in a specified direction 
Are you there? So when work is done, it means that two points must be involved. It must we'll begin from one point and then end in another point. So we start from point one and then end in point two. I hope you are getting it. So in this case, we have this as equation two, as you can see on the screen. Okay, this becomes equation two. When you have final minus initial. Okay, but when it now becomes initial minus final, the change in eternal energy becomes negative. I hope you're understanding this now. So this we can call equation three. So it, it shows that from equation two, if change in energy is equal to 80 joules, for instance, then in equation three, change in energy will be equal to minus 80 joules. I hope you can see this. That's the interpretation of this. So when you are removing final from initial, it is now the reverse of equation two. So understand that equation three is the reverse of equation two. So it shows also that paraventure that from equation two, delta is equal to minus 100 kilojoule from equation two. Then you, when you come to equation three, delta becomes plus 100 kilojoule so it's always reverse vice versa so one of the thing is that when you have a reversible process this is when this theory is applicable so maybe from from the instance the initial process of work done is from one to two but when you're not asked that or when you now see that it is a reversible process now from two back to one the change in eternal energy would have become an opposite value I hope you're understanding this. Now, let me use an illustration to get this clear, as we can see now. Assuming I have a line this way. Please follow me. This is point one. This is point one. And then this is point two. So, between here and to this point two, here we have U1, here we have U2. Then in between them, we have change in U. Are you there? So, if work is done from 1 to 2, this is how we have the journey, okay? This becomes, the change in eternal energy becomes U2 minus U1. Are you there? So, paraventure, the work is now in this direction. From 2 back to 1, it means that change in eternal energy now becomes U1 minus U2. So, if this first one gives you positive value, this other one will give you negative. And if the first one give you negative, the second will give you positive. This is the law. So you need to understand very, very clear that in using this first law of engineering thermodynamics or first law of thermodynamics, which states that energy can neither be destroyed nor created, you must ensure that this equation one, you know this by heart. So that anytime you have a question from here, you now need to state this equation. All right. Then as we make progress again, we also understand very, very, very clear that this change in eternal energy, as you can see here, change in eternal energy, as you can see in equation two, the one we term equation two, that is equal to U2 minus U1. And then for equation three, we now have negative change in eternal energy is equal to U1 minus U2, which is the reverse process of this. This work done. Remember, we have just talked more about in order to be able to apply this first law of thermodynamics very very clear remember we are teaching you the principles okay now you will understand that we have actually talked more about the internal energy when you have forward reaction and then when you have backward reaction if we term it this way like i just use a diagram to illustrate as you can see here all right so in this case now take for instance we want to explore more on this heat and then we want to explore more on work done as you can see here okay at the left hand side of this equation q minus w now there is something you need to know about this q and there is something you need to know about this w now let's dive into that part okay guys now let me give you the very quick key notes that will guide you as to how problems on this aspect are solved anytime you are dealing with thermodynamic uh, calculation these four points that you have here key notes are very very important to guide you all right they are to guide you they are like codes of practice now look at it work done by the system is always taken as positive don't forget when a system does work when work is done by the system on the environment or on the materials or on the fluid as the case may be 
this work is taken as positive. So understand that when you are reading through the question, because these questions, they normally come in what problem, right? So when you are solving these questions, you must pay attention to what type of work you are given. So it's either work is done by the system or work is done on the system. So key number one is when work is done by the system, work done is taken as negative. Anytime work is done by the system, you take it as positive. But when work is done on the system, you take it as negative. That becomes key number two, as you can see on the screen. Are you here? So as you can see from here now on this row, you find out that this case, number one, work is done by the system. So the work done will be taken as positive. But when work is done on the system, either by the environment or, to, or whatsoever it is, that does work on the system, that work is taken as negative. In other words, the, the question, in the question, the value can appear as positive. But because of the work that precedes or succeeds that particular magnitude of work done, you now change the value to whatever, uh, to whatever condition of work that you have. Are you there? Now, the same thing, in any system, work hits can either be accepted or rejected. All right? So this br brings us back to point number three. Now, as you can see here, when heat is added, when heat is accepted, when heat is absorbed by the system, that means when the system receives heat. You see, this word here can come in different ways. All right? It can come in different ways. One, when heat is added. The other, when heat is accepted. The other, when heat is received. The other, when heat is absorbed. All of this means the same thing. But you may not have all of this in one question. So that's the reason why you have it here now. Okay? So you need to pay attention to this. So when heat is added or when heat is accepted or when heat is absorbed or when heat is received by the system, it is positive. So whenever heat is added to a system... Whenever heat is accepted by the system, whenever heat is absorbed by the system, whenever heat is received by the system, such heat is taken as positive. Taken as positive, just as you can see in number three. Then when we come to number four, when heat is rejected, when heat is removed, when heat is involved, when heat is supported, anyhow you put it, as long as in this case, the system is lost in heat, are you there? It is taken as negative. All right? It's taken as negative. So anytime heat is rejected by a system, anytime heat is removed by the system, anytime heat is evolved by the system, anytime heat is separated from the system, anytime the system lost heat, it means that such heat should be taken as negative. So in a summary, of this keynote in order to be able to solve problems using this first law of thermodynamics second law as the case may be guys you must understand that when work is done by the system such work is taken as positive when work is done on the system such work is taken as negative when heat is added to the system such heat is taken as positive and when heat is removed, rejected, or involved by the system, is taken as negative. I hope you have actually gained value from these particular videos. So guys, ensure that you watch this video over and over again so that you get the principles before diving into the calculation part. So very quickly, we shall be diving into solving problems using these basic rules. Don't forget, first law of thermodynamics states that energy can neither be created nor destroyed. In such case, the differences between the heat and work done is actually equal to the internal energy. Thank you guys. Thank you for watching this video. Make sure you like this video. Give us a positive comment at the comment section and then share this video. Love you guys. Thank you. Thank you. In a very short while, I will see you guys in the next video. You can check the description of this video so you can get the link to the next video where I will be showing you 
teaching you, instructing you on how to apply these three equations that we have here to solve problems effectively under the first law of engineering thermodynamics. Thank you very much. See you guys in the next class.